Welcome to the informal video blog. My name is Anthony Garrett and today I'm going to tell you how to publish an ebook on Smashwords using LibreOffice. I have published a number of books on Smashwords. Each of them was written using LibreOffice and this video will describe a specific process that I use to publish. However, this is not a comprehensive video of all possible ways to do it. If you've never published to Smashwords before, or you're just interested in learning more about LibreOffice and how to use it to publish to Smashwords, this video should make a good starting point for you. So one question is, should I use LibreOffice? And I give a resounding yes. Back in 2012, I had a specific project, and Microsoft Word at that time was not robust enough to handle it. LibreOffice blended desktop publishing and word processing in one application, whereas Microsoft Office had separate tools of MS Word and MS Publisher. Now, I don't know how robust Microsoft Word is today, but LibreOffice has been actively developed since, and it's still solid. Other things I like about LibreOffice, it's open source, it's cross-platform, it's actively developed, and perhaps best of all, it's totally free. I will now show the directory structure of how I lay out the book. The example I will use is the fourth book in a series I have written, therefore I call it Book 4, and you will see this in the parent directory's name. I use this Book 4 as a working title because it's easier to remember or say than the longer full title. Now within this parent directory you will see a few things. First is that I do most things in LibreOffice including my ideas files and my to-do list. You'll see here my ideas file for this specific book, book 4, and my general RPL is the name of the world, the, the series. Those ideas are in there and my to-do list, my post-publishing and uh, everything that needs to be done is within this file. Additionally, I have a few text files. These are smaller files that don't change often. Uh, it's just easier to do it here than in a full-blown LibreOffice text document. Within this directory, I also have a underscore archive directory. That's where all the sludgy bits go that I don't want to throw away, but are no longer necessary as part of the publishing or the writing process. The book directory contains, as you would imagine, all of the writing that builds the book. And finally, I have an images directory this particular book doesn't have images, but all Smashword books have a cover image, so it does have a cover. Let's take a look at the cover. Here I have two versions right now. The latest version is here. The cover looks like this. Now, I did not draw this image. I hired a freelance illustrator through a service called Fiverr. I did put the image into the cover template and added the book title and my name at the bottom using a free open source tool called GIMP. Something you may want to note from this cover image is the resolution necessary for a cover in Smashwords. You can see here the line that says original size is 2234 by 3574. I don't recall if those are the required specifications, but I make all of my cover images exactly that size and I never have a problem. The publishing process itself is fairly simple once you have it figured out. Because this is book four of a series, I have the prior books, especially book three, to use as a template. More than that, however, I have specific files that can be copied directly over and tweaked to suit. For example, I can copy over the dedication, the preface, the cast, the rules of hospitality, the parting statement, and about the author. 
these files need minimal tweaking and basically you're done. Story is where all new material goes. 95% of my time goes into writing the story of itself and that's story.odt. Let's take a look. One of the best features of LibreOffice Writer is that anytime you specify something in a heading one format, that heading one style, it immediately gets listed under headings in the navigator. Very, very handy to jump around to any chapter in the book. Now, I personally don't use heading two or heading three, but you can. I have had success using heading two in the past, but for simplicity, I tend to use just heading one. A few other things to note while we're in the file. For simplicity, I use three capital words at the beginning of every chapter. I used to use a drop caps where the first letter would raise three lines high and that did not translate well across devices. Now I just use simple formatting, capital letters, nothing special. I don't even use a style for this. For sub chapters, I do something as simple as having three asterisks. Further down, you'll see that whenever I have a song, I created a special style called song. And all it really is is courier new and a size of 10. One uh, last thing that I wanted to show you are bookmarks that I use in this file. Anytime I introduce a new character into the story, like Calamity Coyote, I create a bookmark. Double clicking this, I can go to that line and it says, my name is Ki uh, Calamity Coyote and I am the fastest coyote in these parts, probably anywhere. So each of the characters, special characters generally, not the main characters, I have a, a quick reference that I can find them instantly. I also have little things like puzzles. You know, this is somewhat of a child's book, kid's book. So here I have uh, a puzzle where the solution is gemstone, J, G, E, M, etc. and so forth. Or I might have a numeric keypad, and I did something like that. And that's just using Courier New. Finally, I have uh, bookmarks for rules of hospitality. That's, again, it's something specific to these, this series. It's something sort of um, a part of this world. And when I want to find that rule of hospitality in the text itself, I can just double click and who that's a rule of hospitality never outstay your welcome so there are tools inside LibreOffice such as bookmarks and the automated headings that allow you to jump to chapters instantly that make LibreOffice a very good choice now I want to discuss the ODM files or the master files which encapsulate the whole book the ODM file binds the sub-documents together into a cohesive whole. But note this, it does not copy the sub-documents. You can have multiple ODM files. You just copy one to another and then make minor, uh, minor tweaks to it without worrying about changing the underlying ODT sub-documents. Thus, you can't make changes to the story or the cast or the rules of hospitality from within the ODM file itself. So you might have an ODM file for, say, Smashwords, for one for Amazon KDP. I have one for my sister Jill. You might have one for beta readers. Now, I don't sit inside an ODM file. I use it to pull everything together and then dump the result for export. I don't spend a lot of time in the ODM files. So let's take a look at one of these. This is the one that I use specifically for my sister. You always get this confirmation pop-up box, this dialog box. I always click yes. 
My sister gets a special copy. She gets it in PDF format. Therefore, I put the cover image directly into the document. In Smashwords, when you publish in Smashwords, you do not do that. You send the cover image separately as part of their system. On the left hand side you will see text, this strange indexy looking thing, looks like a race car, another text, and then you'll see several links which you probably recognize those are the sub documents. If I take a look scrolling down at the first text area, we see the standard text that you would see in any book with the copyright information, the release, uh, no part of the book may be reproduced, etc. and so forth. Because this is for my sister, I have this highlighted area, the special Sid the Goose edition, and I have a revision number for my own personal tracking. Something to note here, and the reason I did it, uh, you cannot use highlighting when you send up to Smashwords. That's why I have this here as a gentle reminder to me that this is not ever to go to Smashwords. Scrolling down some more, I give her a table of contents. And this is a standard LibreOffice, LibreOffice Writer table of contents. You cannot send a table of contents of this type up to Smashwords. It will not pass through the meat grinder. It will fail. You have to do something special for that, and I will create a separate video to that end. But because this is for my sister, the table of contents that is created from LibreOffice Writer is actually fairly good. It works very well. One problem is that when I put the heading of table of contents, it gets listed in the table of contents. Well, I could live with that. But what you'll notice in all of the rest of the table of contents, all of the header ones from the story, plus all of the sub documents which have header ones, all get enca uh, encapsulated into this table of contents. So now if I scroll down some more from the table of contents, I find the dedication which is the very first linked document, uh, sub-document, that is encapsulated in this ODM file. Remember, this is a link. You see the little link notations here in the left column, uh, which means very specifically that it is not copied over. If I want to make a change to the dedication, I can do so by double-clicking on this, but what it does is it opens up the sub-document. So I'm not actually editing this in the ODM file. It's essential that you remember that. So uh, scrolling down a little bit more, one final thing that I wanted to point out from this specific ODM file is that I threw a watermark in here. Very simple one in the form uh, in the footer. I used to have this huge watermark that spanned the page. But <clears throat> the simple fact is my sister is not going to share this with anyone. My beta readers are not going to share this with anyone. I still want a little note in there just to, you know, be to, to remind them, but not anything that I want to halt them from enjoying the, the reading itself. So that was my sister's ODM file. Now let's take a look at the one for Smashwords to compare it against the one we just looked at. Again, the confirmation, I always say yes. And let's scroll all the way to the top. The very first thing you'll note is that the cover image is not embedded in the document itself. It is not in the ODM. Instead of a cover image, I do have a title page. Scrolling down to the information page, you'll see a few minor differences. One is that I designate this as a Smashwords edition. I still have the release version, but here you'll see that I have a placeholder for the ISBN number. Now, I get my ISBN numbers directly from Smashwords, and to get a new ISBN number, you have to 
publish the book first. So it's the case of the chicken and the egg. So I can't get the ISBN number until I've published the book. Therefore, I can't put it into the book until the first update. Not the first release, but the first update. And let's face it, I, I always get an update you know, somebody will read something and say, oh, I found a typo. There's always, there's always one. Scrolling further, here's the table of contents. Now, I mentioned when we talked at the last ODM file that the table of contents cannot go directly up to Smashwords. The meat grinder will reject it. I have this table of contents here as well, one, as a placeholder, but two, I will actually copy and paste this and alter it and convert it. And this is all part of another video, but I use this as a template for building the actual table of contents that Smashwords will allow. So for right now, just think of this as being a placeholder, uh, some information that I can use but understand that this will not go up directly. That has to be taken care of through another video. And scrolling down, now we get to the dedication, the preface, and everything else is exactly the same as the previous ODM file. So I'm going to conclude this video with a list of Smashword no-nos. Most of these I discovered by trial and error. The list is not comprehensive you may have discovered things that I would never even think to try. And the list may have changed since I tried these. I'm not 100% certain on sections anyway. Regardless, as a general rule of thumb, keep it simple. Expect part two of this video series publishing an ebook on Smashwords using LibreOffice soon.